travel beer and far talking about incredible things. We're on and on. We're at your local bar talking about chicks and things. So if you don't have a girl and you're not on a date, then you're listening to the Rod and Don Show. All right, there we were 25 years ago on KJR AM in Seattle. That might be the only radio station that never handed us a box. They actually want us to say. And then along the way, stops in Phoenix and Dallas, places like Grand Rapids, New Orleans, San Francisco, and of course, uh, our home, Seattle, Washington. You may have heard of our demise, but together we rise. It's the Ron and Don Show, now on the Ron and Don Radio Network. Coming up, we're going to do uh, Ron and Don's Five Things. It's brought to you by us. In fact, we're now licensed realtors. We want to come to your next open house and eat all your food and sleep on your couch because that's what Ron and I do in open houses. We love open houses. To us, it's open fridges. That's what we're looking for. Uh, Go to ronanddon.com right now. On one side, if you click on the microphone, you'll find all about the radio show, the new Ron and Don Nation t-shirts for every $5 we make on a shirt. We give that to Charlie's Dinosaur. That's helping cops help kids. And then on the other side, you'll find out more about our real estate adventure and how we can help you buy or sell a home. We'd love to be a part of that, too. Again, powered by our friends at Windermere Midtown and our thanks to Tamara and Patrick Chin, the president there, for making us part of their family. We're going to give you five things right now. And then we know why a lot of you tuned in because you want to know what happened at Kyra Radio. We're going to walk you through it and we're going to tell you what happened on our very last broadcast at 6 37 when we were summoned out of the Cairo studios and we were asked to come into the program director's office. It took about six minutes. We'll tell you what happened in those six minutes that changed our lives forever. But first, let's get to thing number one in Ron and Don's Five Things. Ron and Don's Five Things. So I, I thought I'd open this up because I think many families are going through this right now. I just went to a graduation in Nashville, Tennessee. They're a couple weeks ahead of us because they didn't have the entire month of February destroyed by snow. So uh, I have my niece. She's graduating. So I went back there and I was doing the thing that I think many of us go through. It's like, okay, I'd, I'd like to give her some advice because she's going off to Clemson next year. She's a beautiful young lady. I showed you the, the photos they took for her announcement. Uh, she did very well at school. And I know I, could, I knew she, I could tell she's a little nervous because it's going to be her first time moving away from home, obviously. And first time going to, like going from a very small school to a school of 30,000. And so I, I made her a little, um, a, a notebook and a pen. Um, in the last couple months, I got, I, I decided I would uh, learn how to do leather work. I made you a notebook as well. Well, you did. They're fantastic. And I got a little uh, lathe and I've been turning wooden pens. And people love to get a gift. I think when you can say, I made this for you, that that's kind of cool. So I, I made I made you a pen. I've made a bunch of people pens and I made one for my niece. And so I had this moleskin notebook that I stick inside the leather cover. And I was like, all right, I got I to gotta write something in here. And I said, I, I, I wonder if I could come up with four things especially after what we've uh, been through lately. And it's not just the radio stuff. There's been some other stuff that we're going to talk about uh, with me specifically. I know that, that has happened some very big life events. And I was like, okay, what, what have I learned? How can I boil this down uh, for an 18 year old? And so uh, I haven't shared this with you yet. I'm going to share it. I hope that my niece doesn't mind that I'm going to read part of what I wrote in the inside sleeve of this moleskin for her graduation. Yeah, and I think it's it's, it's okay to say, and we're, we won't get to all this on this episode. Some of this will be in episode number two, but Ron and I uh, both lost family members in the past couple uh, months on top of uh, our do- uh, losing our jobs. And so as a result of that, we've been going through a lot of reflection. So I haven't heard this yet. I can't wait. 
uh, to hear this because I know over the past couple of months you've been learning a lot. So what do you got? I learned a lot. I've been reflecting a lot, and I wanted this to resonate. I hope it resonated with an eighteen-year-old. She said she loved it, uh, but I think she probably had to say that for every gift that she got. But I'm hoping when she gets to college, she'll open this up and journal and write down what's going on in her life. And so I said, "Congrats! I'm super excited for the next chapter for you. I'm sure everyone is giving you tons of advice." So here's mine. And I tried to do very brief four things. Nice. Number one, be grateful every day. Mm. And we will go back and break these down in a minute. Be grateful every day. Number two, do kind things with no expectations. Number three, add value to other people's lives. And number four, remember to have fun. That's it. That's my list. Love you lots, Uncle Ronnie. It's awesome. Take us, so, take us to number one. So What's that about? I uh, be grateful every day. I, I think this is something that I've heard forever, and everybody talks about it. Uh, and when you're going through a, a phase like we just went through, I, I tried to take this to heart, and I literally would write down at least one thing that I was grateful for, uh, and it could be something simple. Uh, like maybe you had a good meal. It could be something like, hey, I, I ran a mile today without stopping. I'd write that down. I'm grateful that I, I have the ability to eat, run a very slow mile. Uh, it could be seeing something beautiful out in nature. Like I would go down to the waterfront sometimes and, and sit on a bench or, or walk along the shore and you'd see something, see a, a ferry boat go by or you'd see a beautiful sunset. I do, Every time I do that, a bird crops on my head. <laughs> yeah, a bird. Yeah. Be grateful I, for that. I try to look at the ferry boat and I try to see the flower and then I'm like, what the hell just happened? Yeah, you sure, it's like, it's not raining, but something just hit me. Yeah. So uh, uh, it's difficult. It was difficult sometimes. I don't know if you have a, a quote unquote gratitude practice. It sounds cheese ball, but being grateful, it helps. Because for me, it gets me out of my own head. You start to think about some other perspective. You start to think about that there are good things in the world, even uh, when it seems like a lot of bad things happen. Finding something good to be grateful for. Um, and I think for her or for kids going off to college, it's tough. You're sort of reinventing your whole life. All your friend group is gone. You're going to a different school than everybody now. You're the back on the being a freshman. So finding something to be grateful for every day instead of going, oh, my God, I hate this. I don't know anybody. This is a weird place. How come, uh, you know, I don't like my dorm room. My class is far away. This is really hard. It'd be, it's very easy to go into that space instead of finding something to be grateful for. Yeah, my mom has always said that. And then you always think that your mom is not very smart because it's your mom and you're, <laughs> you're like 17. 18 years old and then the older you get you just find out that all these things that your parents told you or your mom or your grandparents all these sayings they come from somewhere and they usually come from a place of truth and my mom has all we've t we talked about it in fact you call it wonderment ron but she has a sense of wonderment where when she sits down with you you're the only person in the room she really has the ability to be present with people and as I have gotten older, I, I see how grateful she is for the simple things, for the really simple things each and every day. And she has just gone through an incredible life event that we'll talk about a little bit later. And I've got to walk with her on this life event. And as a result of that, that's what my mom does. To this day, 75, now 76 years old, she wakes up, she has wonderment, she's grateful. And uh, that's where it all starts. So I like that a lot. I like that you started your, your list with that. What else? Do kind things with no expectations. Yeah. That was one of the things where I was like making some pens and giving them away. I can't do that. I always have expectations. I know. So I, I try to well. not have expectations and I still do. Like when I walked in here a, a moment ago so we could start taping the show, you were looking for the pen and the notebook uh, that you made. <laughs> and I didn't bring those things on purpose, right? Weren't you looking and saying, huh, no, what's I... he doing with a Bic pen? Because I stayed up all night and I made him a wooden pen. What is going on here? Here's the thing with that. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, there there is not enough years in the universe for you to create a wooden pen. Yeah. Like I know that you will A, you will never do that. I wouldn't be interested in B, that. B you would be interested in it. Yeah. And C, I think you would blow the piece of wood up and that, that would be more yeah. fun to you than making the pen. Or rip so, my fingers off. Or rip your fingers off. Yeah. So just that was an exercise for me to say, I'm gonna make something. It's going to take time and effort to do it and then give it away. Yeah. And it's so obscure that people yeah. aren't going to give it back. See, I'm not like that. I want to be thanked. 
I want a thank you note. I want a pat on the back. I want to be right. And I can say that I don't, but I do. And I think everybody does. I think everybody wants to be thanked. And, and, and in fact, you want to, but it, to, to try to make an effort to not have an expectation, that's what it's about for me. You can try, but you still have an expectation. You still want you try to, be to thanked. minimize the expectation. Well, you just talked about people gr- being grateful. I want people to, if I'm going to be honest, I want people to be grateful to me when I do something. And when I don't, then I start holding the grudge. It's just true. And we all do that we all hold grudges so these are aspirational number yeah. three so anyway be grateful but when people are grateful for you hold a grudge number two what's number three number three is a- add value to people's life and you and i think are both been working on this a lot of like don't be a taker so if you're going to interact with somebody if you're going to do business with somebody if you're going to be a friend to somebody a family member think how can i how can i make their life better you're right instead of how can they make my life better yeah. i think how can i make their life better? what wh- how could i serve them how what is it that i could do uh like, like is, hang is it, on what you're really doing though is saying how can i make your life better so it makes my life better in a way that's sure. what you're doing right let's but, be honest how can i add value so it adds more value to my life that's the but that's, you, the, that's the way you get there that's the truth you yeah. can't get to the the, the your it's value it's not about without adding being value. value and being grateful and not having expectations of course you have expectations you want value you want people to be grateful and you want them to treat you like you're number one you know it i know it the american people know it that is how we are wired as humans we just are no. You, we I'm, we I'm are pushing back on that. Well, you, you, so, you can so aspire. You, wanna, you, you can wanna, aspire to do You want to add value so you can manipulate people. No, and yes, you do. That's not true. That's what I do. That's what I do. Okay. Yeah, I'm adding value so I can get something in return. Wow. So you. Why are you adding value? Because I think Be in honest. the long run, if you get if you do that and you train yourself uh, to do it uh, every day, I'm untrained. So then I do it uh, when I remember to do it, it. You will, it will come back to you. I believe that. But you, I think if you do it, I think people can tell when you're doing it for selfish this reasons. This is very kumbaya. People it do is. stuff and they add value. So they get value back. That's why they do and it. And then the final one, and Thank maybe you, you have, and you a- should have told your niece this. Look, the bottom line is I'm going to tell you add value, but if you really want to uh, have value in your life and you want uh, great things and nice things, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to add and value then twist to somebody, it around somebody else's end. life. Yeah, and then it's gonna work out really well for you. Uh, finally, number four was uh, remember to have fun. Yeah, you called me uh, a while back, what a, I a couple months ago, and you said you need to introduce yourself to Fun Ron again. That's right. And, I did uh, say that. And to you. so I was like, wow, that it, it hurt when you said it at did first, it? but yeah. then I was I, adding value to your life because no, you I knew weren't. if you became Fun Ron again, that that would create a right. lot of fun for me. See how that exactly. works? Exactly. Yeah. And so remember to have fun. And so even in the the, the toughest times, you can still have fun. You can still find something that makes you smile. Yeah, that's right. And uh, if we're just going to be transparent, we've gone through some tough times here. Has nothing to do with our radio jobs. Has to do with a bunch of other life stuff that has happened. And you know what? We're not special. It happens to all of us, doesn't it? It does. It happens to each and every one of us. And in the midst of all that, you know what's really cool is to, as Ron talked about, just being a giver, adding value. And coming up here, I used to say at the bottom of the hour. Right. But I don't know when people are listening, so there is no bottom of the hour. But coming up, a few short minutes, Ed Troyer is going to join us. And we're going to talk to him about not only what it's like to be one of the top cops in Pierce County. You know he's a PIO there. But also, there's something called Charlie's Dinosaur. And it's a way that we can help cops, help kids. And Ed is going to join us, I think, probably in about 10 minutes from now. So, don't go anywhere. It's the Ron and Don Show on the Ron and Don Radio Network, brought to you by our real estate company and our real estate venture. We would love to help you buy or sell a piece of real estate. And don't forget, an open house is an open fridge. And we will probably sleep on your couch and take a nap is people are coming by. And we will let them rifle through your cabinets because that's what we're going to do when you're gone. <laughs> Have you gone through someone's cabinets Absolutely yet? Absolutely not. I, I did look to. in a fridge. I found a piece of chocolate in there. There you go. See, you're not now you're being honest. Now you're being, you I, add I, value to get value back. And then you, you take do some open chocolate. houses so you can get really great leftover pizza from last night. An open night. house is my chocolate. There you go. All right. Don't go anywhere. We're back in 30 seconds. Uh, My son is going to stop by here in just moments and remind you about the Ron and Don Show and the Ron and Don Radio Show. And don't forget to get that Ron and Don Nation t-shirt. It is sweeping the Ron and Don Nation. Five bucks to Charlie's Dinosaur. 
Why wouldn't you want to? Hey, you guys. Are you ready for the best show in the Pacific Northwest? Here's my dad to his boyfriend hit him and friend. All right, Ron and Don's up five things brought to you by us, Ron and Don. We are now licensed real estate brokers, powered by our good friends at Windermere Midtown. If you want to find out more, if we can help you buy, we can help you sell. Hang that W in your front yard. All you have to do is go to ronanddon.com, click on the microphone. That's all the radio stuff. And the brand new Ron and Don Nation t shirts with $5 goes uh, to help cops help kids and charlie's dinosaur and then on the other side click on the real estate logo and uh, we'll tell you how we can help be a part of one of your biggest transactions so we'd love to do that we love open houses because we love to open your fridge man when you're not there yeah we try on your shoes we do all kinds of weird no we don't anyway uh hey this is kind of interesting uh spice girls on tour uh, without one of the spices. And Sporty's out there, Spicy Spice out there, all the spices. They're missing one of the spices, though, which was kind of shocking to me. Uh, Posh Spice, who I kind of was in love with back in the day, has decided she is done, she is retired, that's it, that's a... I think so, her and David Beckham are doing okay. Is that Yeah, and a lot of people wondered, how will they be in Dublin, Ireland? So they opened last night. They opened last night, and evidently they were horrible. Uh, a lot of the people really? that went, they said on Twitter, they said it's one of the worst shows they've ever seen. They paid hundreds of dollars to go. Uh, Spice Girls continue. They're just going to continue on this show. I think they're off to Cambridge. They don't care. Uh, they are they are filling up stadiums all over the country, all over the world. I think they're doing this for the next three months. The interesting thing, though, that they didn't do, that a lot of artists do, is they will do these sneak surprise shows. In fact, you and I, when we used to do uh, music radio, we would find out that maybe one of the guys or two of the guys from Nirvana or maybe Duff was going to be out and he was doing something, or maybe the guys from Velvet Revolver, when nobody knew who what Velvet Revolver was, and you go out, you do these mini surprise shows, just to kind of do a tune-up show before you went into these large arenas and stadiums. They didn't do that. Uh, well, this this is exactly what happened with the the U two tour last year. The, the, the last time U two played in Seattle, they opened the the tour here. And they were doing the entire Joshua Tree. I don't know if you remember this. This was maybe a year ago, year and a half ago. So they're going to play the entire Joshua Tree, song after song, from front to back, which they didn't even do when they were on the Joshua Tree tour. <laughs> they didn't. They just yeah. played the hit. So they when they when once they started the Joshua Tree, they played it in its entirety uh, through the entire album, and it was horrible. Really? It was the first time they did it. Edge even talked about, like, he had to go back and relearn these songs. He hadn't played these songs in 30 years or whatever. Right. So the, there was a quite a few. The, the hits were there. Yeah. Like, With or Without You sounded great. Uh, Big Sky Country or whatever that song was called was great. But Or get In God's Country. Um, but the, there was a couple songs on there that were, like, deep album tracks mm. that sounded horrible. Um, but I'm still glad I went. Yeah. And the, they say as the tour progressed, those those album tracks got tighter and so by the time they did it 20 times or whatever the, that part of the show was really good but there was a moment there where i'm like ah, yeah th this is they needed to practice this more. sometimes you just practice. sometimes you just go though because you want to be there at the event like yeah, i love them. i love the spice girls i'm i'm uh, a spicy spice my favorite spice. i i i would go just to say i would i was at that event that's what I did with Kiss. I've been in the Kiss Army ever since I was a young kid with my friends uh, uh, Tommy and Steve Bennett. And any Kiss show that I've ever been to has always been horrible. Absolutely some horrible. highlights. No, really bad. I was there when they lit the Tacoma Dome on fire. You listen to the record, and then you go and you hear them play, and you're like, is that the same song? Is that you're doing Beth, I Hear You Calling? Are you joking? It sounds, it, it sounds, it sounds horrible. But you go because they light things on fire. You go because they blow things up. You go because you see guys in eight-inch stilettos out there jumping around the stage, right? And you see Gene Simmons out there, like at the age of 69. I think he's 69 years old. And he well, they is put still, on a good show. They put, he's, he's still spitting blood and fire all over the stage. And that's why you go. And I think that's one of the reasons why people go to see the Spice Girls. Let me ask you this real quick. One artist that you would want to go see, no matter how horrible they were, Ron, just to say, you know what? I was there. I'll tell you I the saw one that them. I missed. I was a part of it. I'll tell you the one I missed, and I still regret it. Yeah. Stevie Ray Vaughan played a bumper shoot. Oh, he and did? I, and I did not go. Okay. 
Uh, and I regret it to this day because I never got to see him. And I wish that what I would have done whatever it takes to see Stevie Ray Vaughan yeah. live in concert. My first show ever, and I told you about this, Tingley Coliseum, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and it was Glenn Campbell, and is at a rodeo, and he breaks out through this uh, paper. Hey, buddy, it's time for Glenn Campbell. Shoot, bud. Okay. Glenn Campbell just died. I know. And had dementia. And I was going to tell a story oh. about Glenn Campbell dying, having dementia, couldn't remember the words when he was out on tour. I was. That's not happened when you went to see him. That's what I'm saying. I would have gone to see, because I understand oh. those shows were horrible, and I would have gone to see those shows I because see. his daughter Ashley would so stand up guy. and she would sing and she would run the band when Glenn couldn't remember anything. And then you just did the shoot buddy. All right, I take that back. You can't. You can't take it back. It says take it's it un- back. It's not. You, I didn't know where you're going. It's going to take call Sam. You cannot take it back. And I was about. I was going to bookend you're gonna write this story, this and thing. it was going to be beautiful. And how do we get out of this now? And my son is over giggling and laughing at us on the floor, which is what's so great about a podcast. Is your nine-year-old can come and make fun of you while you're broadcasting. Couldn't do that on the Let's radio. go. To, if the Spice Girls come to America, we're going. What's that? If the Spice Girls come, let's go. Well, we're not going to be at the Glenn Campbell show. We will not. It's the Rod and Dodd show on the Rod and Dodd radio network. What are you laughing at, you? My dad is back. Like it or not, you're listening to the Ron and Don show. You can find the guys at ronanddon.com. All right, it's the Ron and Don Radio Network. Find everything Ron and Don at ronanddon.com, ronanddonradio.com. And don't forget, Ron and Don, now licensed real estate brokers. Uh, we will come stand in your home during an open house. And what we actually do during an open house is we open your fridge when you're gone. We rifle through your fridge, don't we, Ron? Oh, absolutely. I saw some chocolates the other day at an open and house. And you talk really loud. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, so if you'd like us to be a part of one of the greatest transactions of your life, we're storytellers. We would love to tell the story of the house you're looking to buy or sell. Ron and Don are brokers. Ronanddonbrokers.com. That's another website if you want to check that out. All powered by our friends at Windermere, Patrick Chin, our good friend Tamara, and uh, everybody at Windermere right there in South Lake Union. Our thanks to everybody. 90 agents strong. And now we're a couple of those agents. How about that? No, anyway. And Troyer is here from the Pierce County Sheriff's Department. One of the things you're going to find when you go to ronanddon.com, Ron, you're going to find a T-shirt. And we're going to talk about this T-shirt with Ed Troyer in a moment because $5 toward every T-shirt that you buy, the Ron and Don Nation T-shirt, is going to go towards something that Ed's involved in that we've all been involved in. If you're part of the Ron and Don Nation, that's why we want you to buy the shirt. But back up a little bit because you just went to your niece's graduation. While you're there, I understand you stopped the presses and you had – the Ron and Don Nation t-shirt was born. Is this correct? Uh, kind of that story. So my brother-in-law is a is sort of a player in the merchant country music merchandising in Nashville. And I was there for uh, my niece's graduation, as we talked about. And um, so we needed this shirt. You actually were texting me. We got to have the shirt. Yeah. For the first Ron and Don show, we have to have the shirt. Got to have the shirt. <laughs> so we went in there. Yeah. And Russ, my brother-in-law, I'll brag on him a minute. He was Brooks and Dunn's original merch manager, and like the Boot Scoot and Boogie era. So he went around america selling boot scoot and boogie merchandise and he's like i don't know if i can do this for the rest of my life because you're on a bus you're just setting up tearing down all, all this the life on the road he, well he said he slept good on a bus but it just wasn't his life so he came back to nashville set up a shop uh, and they do like toby keith stuff he does the brooks and dunn stuff back in the day right now he's doing uh, some of thomas rett stuff who was just here i think he played in tacoma and um so we needed this shirt done we literally walked in uh, and the press manager, Gilly, uh, was yelling to me about the LSU Tigers against the uh, Tennessee Vols this year. <laughs> and off the press were coming uh, Dick's Last Resort t-shirts. If you don't know Dick's Last Resort, and Ed, there's like 40 of these. You've been to them. It's, oh, yeah. It's a weird I, I restaurant. I love bringing people to Dick's Last Resort that does that they don't know what's going to happen when they get there, and they're shocked. What does happen? Rude treatment. Rude treatment. They bring you in there. And they yell and they at you. they make fun of you. They <laughs> yell at you. They cut they, your tie oh, off. Oh, yeah. They do all kinds of crazy they stuff. They cut your hair sometimes, they cut your, too. So yeah. Dick's Last Resort shirts are coming. We stopped the Dick's Last Resort 
a run, which I think they're a little bit of a bigger client than uh, Ron and Don Radio for now, for now. Uh, before we grow. Yeah. Uh, then we switched out the plates. We put the Ron and Don Nation t-shirt plates on there to do a two-color t-shirt, black, white, and gray, men and women, uh, ran some Ron and Don shirts, and then they switched it back over because the Dick's Last Resort shirts were yellow mm. and blue, yeah. so they had to switch the ink, do the whole thing. But Gilly got it done. He wants me to know that Tennessee's going to be horrible this year, but they're coming back. Okay. Anyway. The shirts are spectacular. Ed has on uh, just one of the shirts and nothing else. He just has it. those in his combat boots, his tactical boots. It's David he Rose's was, combat boots. And he has <laughs> on, I borrowed them. <laughs> he has on his, his gun belt and his badge. That's all he's wearing right now. That's a, that's a disturbing thing. It's visual. like Reno 911. <laughs> I, got, I got the lieutenant uniform on exactly. Reno 911. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. He has his shades on. Anyway, uh, as you know, Ed's the PIO from uh, Pierce County, the Pierce County Sheriff's Department. And before we talk about Charlie's Dinosaur and where this $5 is going, uh, take us back because I think everybody wants to know who is Charlie and who is Braden. And this all goes back to a young ba- man by the name of Josh Powell who committed some horrible crimes in this area, right? Absolutely. And I think one of the things that needs to happen right now, if you have kids in the car, it might be time to not listen to this or turn it down or make sure they have their headphones on or listen to games. Because I'm going to tell you the story that is a little bit more, it's kind of brutal and it's very, very sad and and it's hard to explain to kids what happened. Um, I know that the counselors had a hard time telling where the kids went to school, their friends and everybody. So, uh, uh, Listeners, beware. This is going to be a little bit graphic, and it's going to be the truth. So Charlie and Braden Powell were two boys that lived in Pierce County when they were killed. Their father was Josh Powell, who was a suspect in the disappearance of his wife, Susan Powell, out of Utah. And, of course, the whole thing rolls back into Pierce County, and our detectives pick it up and start working it uh, for many reasons because she's missing and she's dead. Uh, probably in a mine somewhere, buried in the desert somewhere. We just don't know. That's really the only missing piece of the story. But the two boys um, went through court. They went through a ton of different stuff. They lost their mother. Josh took them camping, supposedly at 1 o'clock in the morning in freezing temperature, and mom disappeared. Man, that's not really true. He went, killed mom and disposed of her body, probably with the boys in the car. And, and, and Ed, why wasn't he arrested in Washington? Because I remember we talked about it back in the day, but there's probably people thinking the same thing I did. How do you kill someone in another state, move to Pierce County, and you're not arrested the next day? Well, because the crime happened in Utah in a town where they didn't have homicides. And no offense to the police department there, but when we look at the evidence, he should have been arrested. I know our detectives would have arrested him, and I know our prosecutor would have charged him when you look at the evidence that we have now. Um, But when they came back to Pierce County, things got a little bit strange in that um, we were the boys were with the grandparents of Susan's mom and dad. So the boys were staying with them and living with them and then were court ordered to let Josh go see him. And we were shocked when that happened. We brought the pornography in. We brought all the bad stuff and said, these boys should not see their dad un- at all, let alone unsupervised. Yeah. So he set up a house in Pierce County and this was an ordinary house. This was a trap, right? This was a house that he rented at the end of a cul-de-sac and we believe he pre-planned this for a long time. And when he got his visit with the boys, the social worker that brought the boys there was not a guard for the boys. She was just there to transport. I mean, she's devastated. This is not her fault. She dropped the boys off and when she dropped them off, she was supposed to supervise a visit. He pushed her out, locked the doors, and she called 911. Within a few minutes, the house was totally engulfed in flames. What we learned later is that he took an axe and hit both of the boys in the back of the head and tried to kill them with an axe, doused himself, the boys in the house with gasoline, and lit it on fire. Mm. I mean, it's just, I mean, <clears throat> that's the truth. That's yeah. what it is. You walked through that scene. Yes, I was there. It was Super Bowl Sunday, and I was there very early. In fact, I helped take um, the boys out of the house. Um, I just felt the need to do that when I was there because I'd met the boys a few times and our detectives had met the boys many times when we did different types of search warrants and everything. Some of our female detectives that are some of our brightest detectives spent time with these boys. And so we're we're, we're very close to those that family. What's it like for a guy like you that has seen a lot of stuff and what's it like for the men and women for the Pierce County Sheriff's Department to see a scene like that? Well, you know, um, we see this stuff every day, but not this type of stuff. The the raw inhumanity just was very, very, very violent, and the whole entire story is very graphic. And you're hearing the most graphic version I've ever told. 
Um, and I know the TV shows are, and there's more to it, but the back end of it came Charlie's Dinosaur. Yeah. Talk about Charlie's Dinosaur in a moment. First, though, let's talk about what you, mm-hmm. the people of Pierce County, people that are part of the Ron and Don Nation, that's why we had these T-shirts made. Yeah. And tell us about a cemetery where those boys are buried oh, and yeah. what the family tried to do in terms of burying, insult to injury. Yeah. of burying the father. Yeah, so a strange twist in this whole thing away from what happened is they buried the boys in a cemetery called Woodmine in South Hill in Puyallup. And once the boys were buried, somebody in Josh's family decided they were going to bury Josh right next to the boys. And the sheriff, Paul Pastor of Pierce County, wonderful man, says, that's not right. We can't put a suspect that killed boys and bury him right next to him. So we tried to figure out what to do, how we could do it. And of course, um, between the two of us, we don't really know how it happened. We figured out, well, let's go out to the cemetery and see if they've actually bought the plots. I drove out there and I took Paul Pastor's checkbook and my checkbook and they had not paid for the plot. So what we did is we bought all the plots in the dirt around where the boys were buried so they couldn't do it. And then when we were done with it, we were like, uh-oh, how much trouble are we in? Is, is this legal? We didn't know. you know. And then you guys somehow found out about it and put it out on the air, and it just blew up across the country. Yeah. And uh, we ended up buying plots, so we Josh had, yeah. couldn't be buried next to those children. Uh, I don't know where Josh is buried, and I don't care to know. But those those plots were are being put to a really honorable use to this day. Right, right, absolutely. So that whole entire hill, there are some other kids that are buried there, and we spent some of the money, and we did something called a Angel of Hope from the Christmas Box uh, book, and there's a hundred of them across the country that honor kids, and we built a statue, a really beautiful monument above where the boys are, and other people bury kids there, and if people can't afford to buy a plot, we donate the extra money and land to bury, you know, kids that die of fire, um, murder, unnatural deaths. That way they're all together with this angel overlooking them. Hmm. We're talking to Ed Troyer. He's the PIO. He's one of the best cops out there. Uh, and you've heard him a lot on the Ron and Don show. He's a big part of the Ron and Don nation. And of course, one of the great voices, not just in Pierce County, but as my son likes to say, the specific Northwest. Out of this horrible tragedy, this is what I love, and this is why we want you to buy a shirt. Uh, because five dollars from every shirt sale is going to go toward cops like Ed's, like Ed and his cops, and these cops are going to help kids. And one of the ways we're going to do that is with Charlie's dinosaur. Talk to us a little bit about Charlie. Of course, one of these boys, one of the Pow boys. We don't call him. We, well, we call them the Cox Boys now. Call them the Cox Boys. Yeah, Grandpa earned the last name, and Josh, is, as far as I'm concerned, that last name, Powell, just needs to be wiped off everything. Yeah. So we're going to call them the Cox Boys here. Charlie and Braden, tell us about this dinosaur. Well, when we did the search warrant in the aftermath of everything, we found a drawing of a dinosaur that Charlie did in school. And we took that drawing, which I have in my office framed, his actual original drawing, and we had it made into a logo, and we called it Charlie's Dinosaur. And what Charlie's Dinosaur is, is people donate backpacks, school supplies, clothing, I mean, tampons for teenage girls, uh, all the different stuff that we've talked about. And it goes into our warehouse and it goes into backpacks and suitcases for kids that are displaced. We work with the advocacy center. We work with a bunch of different people and our detectives are able to come down and many fire departments and anybody in the public safety business runs into problems at night and they need stuff for kids. They come down and they take a suitcase of all brand new stuff and it's called Charlie's Dinosaur. We put a little tag on it, no paperwork, no questions asked and deliver it to that kid. Their schoolwork, food, everything that can keep a kid sustained for a few days until he gets help from another adult or the state kicks in or whatever circumstance they're in to their mom and dad come home. And I want to give a, like a, a kind of an example because I think if you're a, an adjust, a well-adjusted person and you've lived a, a pretty good life, you don't even know what this means. So let's take an example that you've seen, something like uh, I, we've heard stories, maybe there's domestic violence with drugs involved. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. One of uh, the people in your force will, will come up and find a 5-year-old or a 6-year-old or a brother and sister and take it away from there. 
Well, we take it a lot of times, most foster parents, I'm a foster parent myself, so all you out there listening and are foster parents have been through this, where you get a kid dropped off with nothing but the clothes on their back, uh, no matter what age they are. And it takes a while to get situated, and they're in a traumatic situation. Um, no matter what mom and dad did or whatever happened to get them there, you know, they're without their parents, and they're alone, and they're just wearing what they have. So our deputies, our detectives, and anybody else in the public service business that comes across kids like these can come get a suitcase or a backpack and bring it to them full of snacks, artwork, books, clothing, the right size. It's all brand new, and a lot of time, it's the first time these kids have ever had anything brand new to themselves, and they get to keep it. They get to keep it with them. And first responders gave it to them. And the reason why first responders are able to give it to them is from the Ron and Don Nation and citizens who donate to the program. We're 100% volunteer, and every penny and every donation goes right to what we just talked about. Yeah. So if you want to buy a shirt, a Ron and Don Nation shirt, uh, we're going to take the majority of the money those shirts make, and we're going to give it to Charlie's Dinosaur, helping cops help kids, cops like Helping cops help kids. I love that. Yeah, like Ed Troyer right here. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a good thing. Yeah, it is a good thing. I'm glad. Can I say this? Yeah, same thing. Stephen you Stephen Powell, the grandfather. Yeah. I am so glad he's dead and in the box. Well, you know, I wish he would have lived another day. Stephen Powell's a whole another story. And I think anybody has seen the specials on TV about him videotaping little girls and doing the weird, weird stuff he did. Um, just sad. But um, we knew he was going to die, and uh, our detectives, when he came back to the hospital out of wherever his group home was, wherever, wherever the heck or the hell he was living, uh, we found out he was in the hospital, and we were going to go talk to him the next day, and we went up there, they told us he was dead. Yeah. He's the I mean, grandfather. Good, rid good riddance. The father I mean, of good Josh. Riddance, good riddance, but one more day, maybe to get some information out of him to find Susan's body would have been great. Yeah. But, you know, he was a narcissistic POS and probably wouldn't have told us anyway and took his last breath right in front of us. Yeah. Probably would have. I'm glad he's dead. I don't know. Yeah. I don't no, know I if mean, that's okay. So. I, hey, I feel a lot of us feel the same exact yeah. way. Charlie and Braden, mm -hmm. helping cops help kids. Uh, it's a 5013C. Where can people yep. go right now? You can go to ronanddon.com, ronanddonradio.com, buy that t shirt, or you can go right to the website. Yeah, you can go right to the website. You know, we don't really promote a lot of it because we are lucky enough to um, have 100% volunteer and we don't really have a website. We have a Facebook page and we depend on different groups of people that do fundraisers for us, including you guys, Ron and Don Nation. I mean, for years and years of help with Charlie's Dinosaur. And we also know about Toys for Tots. We'll talk about that some other show. But without, without, without the people and everybody that's involved, none of this works. Yeah. Did you hear our show was canceled by a local... Uh, well, I heard. I heard your show was canceled, and, I, and maybe two or three hundred people have asked me what the hell happened, oh. and I have not had an answer for them because I promised you guys I'd keep it quiet yeah. until, but I think now I get to tell people. I literally, when I go to Costco, and I know a lot of people recognize me from TV, but more people stop me and tell me they used to hear me on Ron and Don, yeah. more than all the TV networks and everything yeah. around and there were great people and so many people I don't know have reached out to me knowing I'm your friends has wondered what happened to those guys mm. and are pissed yeah well uh, it's episode one and you got to be a part of it I'm very I'm very honored to be on episode one and you guys have yeah. me up here and, and we ran out of guests so we're gonna have you on episode two <laughs> <laughs> I'll come up anytime you, you know me I'll you, come up anytime Ed I, travels I, with I his own fan you brought I, your own microphone I brought too. my own microphone because yeah. I know how I can sound good yeah. anyway so we're not canceled and one of the reasons we're not canceled because we want to keep doing good mm -hmm. good stuff in the community with folks like Ed Troyer and all the great people of Pierce County speaking hey a lot of people have asked us what happened at Kyle radio and coming up we're gonna tell you what happened at Kyle radio it's Ron and Don's five things Brought to you by the Ron and Don Radio Network and ronanddon.com. But don't forget, Ron and Don now licensed brokers. If you're ready to buy or sell, we're powered by Windermere. Uh, just go to ronanddonbrokers.com. And we will see you about 30 seconds on the other side of this. Don't go anywhere unless you want to. It's the Ron and Don Show, starring Ron and Don, and sometimes me, at ronanddon.com. All right, Ron and Don's uh, Five Things, brought to you by us, Ron and Don. We are now licensed real estate brokers. We'd love to be a part of your biggest transaction. We are storytellers. Let us tell your story. 
Hang that W, that Windermere sign, in your front yard. All you have to do is go to ronadon.com, click on the microphone, find out all about the radio show, because we're broadcasters too. But we got to feed our family and our dog's named Charlie. So if you're ready to buy, sell, or you just want to know more, uh, click on our little real estate sign. All powered by Windermere, and our thanks to Patrick Chin and Tamar for being so great to us at Windermere Midtown. So if you're anywhere in the Pacific Northwest, we want to be a part of your next biggest life transaction. All right. Hey, uh, coming up here, a lot of people have tuned in. You saw, may have saw a couple of months ago on the front of Seattle Times that we were no longer at Cairo Radio, and it creates a lot of questions, and we know that because when I go to my son's school or I walk into the store, everybody wants to know what happened. And for a little while, we didn't know what happened. And we'll tell you what happened uh, in those six minutes where basically uh, we were told to leave and to not come back. And we're thinking about retirement. And then we're also thinking about how do we stay connected with the Ron and Don Nation? Because everywhere we go, over 50,000 of you have reached out to us. And you want us to somehow to continue to broadcast so we can do a lot of great cause radio, and a lot of good things in the community. And so that's what episode one, two, three of the Ron and Don show here is all about. And uh, who knows? We could be like Cher because these could be the final episodes, Ron. But she has been on her final tour for the last 20 years. So who knows? Maybe we'll do two episodes. Maybe we'll do 200. Maybe we'll be uh, 2,000. We, we don't know. But it's kind of like Kiss. These Kiss are has the f- been doing the final record and yeah. the final tour for 25 yeah. years. Anyway, something the HR departments do now, and I thought that this was kind of interesting, is when you leave a company or you're asked to leave a company, they will send out a survey or the basically it's an exit interview you sit down do an exit interview right so anyway i reached out to our former employer and i said would you guys like to do an exit interview with me and you're not going to believe this nobody actually wanted to necessarily do an exit interview with I me i was not given the opportunity to do an i was given interview. a phone number i had to reach out i was given a phone number though and the folks at hr said that they would talk to me but i thought that managers maybe would want to reach out to us because a lot of these managers have been our friends our dear friends over the years uh, in fact, one of them I climbed Mount Rainier with, and he was in the room uh, when we were let go. I, th- I thought they would reach out and want to have a cup of coffee. That hasn't happened. So I reached back a little bit, and I said, well, could I do an exit survey, maybe with one of the managers? And they sent me something. Uh, it's a survey from the Survey Monkey. Mm. Uh, you didn't get this. I was going to go through this real quick with you. Uh, this is from our former employer. Uh, number one, what is your location? So you're supposed to fill that in. So, okay. So we're going to put Seattle, Washington. We're going to put Seattle, Y Ron's basement right now on the Ron and Don Radio Network. Number two, uh, how would you rate Bonneville as an employer? Very good, good, average, below, well, it's, below it's like average. Fill in the blank. Or very poor. No, yeah, you just the bubbles. Yeah, and I have to. If I'm going to be totally transparent here, I have to say very good. I have to say. I don't have to say. I will say. We have worked for all the broadcast companies out there at least one time. And I have to say that working for Bonneville, for Bonneville International, I think they've been the finest employer as far as uh, broadcasters go. Yeah, I think for the majority, I, I think up until the last day, I would say very, what's my, very, very true or whatever. The very, thing, very, very, very good, 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 average, below average or very poor. Yeah, I don't think that, that my last encounter was, was, was very below average. Wasn't a love story. No. Wasn't a love letter that was written to us, that's for sure. Uh, number three, how would you rate... The leadership of Bonneville International, the company, the president, the executive team, same thing. I had to say good to very good. All my interactions with folks out of Salt Lake City have yeah, the always president's been, been fantastic. Has, have always, always been uh, uh, good to very good. We got good. a couple phone calls with him. He was always very yeah. nice. Uh, number four, how would you rate your direct supervisor? And I'm going to skip that right now. Uh, our supervisors change a lot over the years. How many program directors did we have in our 13 we had at years? At least nine. I think we had nine. Might have been 10, yeah. but at least nine. That chair changes about every 12 to 18 months. Every 12 to 18 months, we would, we would have a new supervisor who had a new vision and a new direction. And uh, I think we'll talk about that coming up when we talk about our, our dismissal uh, from Cairo. Number uh, five, how would you rate the pay? Very good, good, average, below average, very poor. I'd say very good. We were very well uh, compensated. I would say I agree. Very, very good. Uh, number six, how would you rate the benefits, the health plan, the retirement? Uh, I would have to say very good because as we, as we work for Bonneville, they're owned by the Mormon Church, 
and you're treated as if you're part of the church. So that so so the health care benefits were very good. Uh, Seven was a good policy. Would you recommend uh, working at Bonneville International? I would. Would you? Yeah. Okay. I think if you're in the industry, of course. Yeah. Number eight. Why are you leaving the company? <laughs> you're supposed to put on Survey Monkey here. Uh, okay. How would you answer that? Uh, I was told to leave. Yeah. And I was told to get that I had my uh, the my card key would no longer worked and I needed to get out, get yeah. my stuff and get out. Yeah. I did leave my mini fridge there, which I'm a little bitter over. Oh, you are? Because I bought a mini fridge. I brought it to work uh, so I could keep my own personal lunch cold. And yeah. then everybody else started putting their lunch in there. Yeah. Uh, and I was putting stuff in my car and just was like, ah, I didn't want to go back in and take everybody's stuff out of the mini fridge. So my mini fridge is still in the job. That's on the survey monkey. Number 10. Did you leave your mini fridge and would you like to get it back? I would like my mini fridge back. <laughs> my own, I bought that with my own money. You know what Sears. I did is I called one of the producers cause I left my dumbbells there. Cause I had dumbbells that I would use during the, during the breaks. And I was able, somebody t- took my dumbbells, threw them in the car and I got those returned. So you said I, I can get my mini fridge back. Cause otherwise I knew that John Curley was going to swipe my dumbbells uh go he, on though and he blew up my exercise ball too but that's another story for another day anyway uh what would you change uh to do or improve at bonneville international uh, i think we have what would s- i do to change what we what what, what would you suggest uh on the survey that, monkey that, that i needed to improve or no that it says what would you change or improve at bonneville international i i honestly um have thoughts in my head right now that I'm let me let me see if I can formulate this and be fair. I'm I'm tempted to be a smart aleck and I'm gonna try to not be a smart aleck. The company as an entity for the years and years and years that we worked there would go out of its way to say we're not like everybody else. We have a corporate culture that is founded as, as a subsidiary of the Mormon church. So community service is very important to us. Doing good things in the community is very important to us. The bottom line, while important, is not the only metric we use to, to determine if someone is a success. And they, they hammer that message over and over and over. Every time you do a meeting, every time you do a year-end review, every time there's an announcement from corporate, they always hammered we're not like the other companies. We're not publicly traded. Uh, we want to be the envy of the broadcast world where people want to work here and be very happy. And we treat people better. And they go, they would go on and on vociferously about that message. Would you agree with how I just described that? That, that was a mantra in, in that company. Yeah. It's part of, it's, it's part of the culture. Yeah. The way that I feel like I was treated in the end was not in accordance with those principles. And so uh, I think that if you're going to preach that as strongly as they preach that, then you need to, in my opinion, to act that way when times are hard. Yeah, and it's okay to let us go. It's just the way that we were let go and during a right, broadcast. It's their, it's their and it was it was prerogative. It was very heavy. It was very heavy handed. It was done in a, in a in a way that was not did not jive well with the, what they profess. Hmm. Finally, number ten optional. What was your role? And uh, we were after and drive there for the last thirteen years. I think that says a lot when a company sends you a survey monkey, and former executives or managers don't pick up the phone and don't call you and don't reach out. But a lot of the hosts there have, a lot of the producers have. We've heard from a lot of people uh, inside the building, but not the people that decided uh, that we should. So no let me work ask there. you so. this because we actually haven't talked about this specific part. The, you and I have been through quite a few companies in our career. The second at six thirty-seven, when we were asked to go to the program director's office, what did you think was going on? Because I didn't think that that would was my last day. I thought it was unusual because usually. Um, those folks were gone at that, you know, they would leave around five or sometimes a little bit before five. So I thought I was like, huh, there's like so-and-so still in the building. So that was odd to me, but I, I wasn't thinking right. The instant it happened, I didn't think that it was, I knew cause he never works. It's four fifty nine, and he was gone. It was a nine to five job. So he's there at nine gone at five. A lot of times I'd be there at six, seven in the morning. I would never see him, uh, and never there in the evenings or a lot of times I'd be there on the weekends, never see 
uh, that particular person on the So on you the knew, you thought, oh, I'm getting fired right yeah, now? Yeah, well, when I walked in, I saw him, and then I saw the gentleman I climbed right near with, and he's sitting in that chair not looking at us, and I went, oh, they're, they're about well, to... Well, yeah, when, about once to, we got into the office, They're I about knew. to hand us a box. Once and, we got in the office, I knew, but the, the yeah. walk, like the initial, the, 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 the seconds... The, from going from the studio to the office, yeah. I didn't know. And when I saw the people in the office, I was like, oh, it's this kind of meeting. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is the day before, our producer at the time, who's now on that show, uh, contacted me and asked me to write down all the things, all the things that we had done for charity uh, in the past year. And so I wrote all those things down. And I thought they were turning those things into winning another award because an award. Uh, and it was usually our show and our listeners that would do a lot of work in the community. As a result of that, the radio station would end up applying for this award, and, and a number of times they received this award. And it's a prestigious honor. When I when 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 we walked in that office, I I knew it was, I knew it was that time. And, and, like and, and, you then, said, and then there was a, there was a campaign that was used. They took all the things that I'd shared, and that's the campaign that they created to talk about our legacy. And to thank us, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you're taking what I wrote yesterday, and you're firing me today, and now you're using these things uh, to say thank you to us to talk about our legacy and let people know that our show would cancel. And, and, I, 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 was, I was blown away by that. Listen, it, whoever in, came in up the, with that campaign, I don't think that worked. In the media business, people lose their jobs. It's it's their it's their prerogative, and we've known this for twenty five years in working in radio. People get fired, so like the the fact um, that it happened was just within their rights to do. Like it, it's it's their station, it's their company. Uh, they can choose who's on the air and who's not on the air. I I honestly don't have a problem with that, um, but the way in which it happened. And the amount of time that we invested there, I think that it could have been and should have been done with a little more class. Yeah. My stepfather was dying. Uh, my son is sitting in the room with us right now. And on Christmas Day, my son and I and my mother had on blue gloves. And we changed grandpa's diaper for the last time and got him into hospice care. And the humane thing to do would have been to say, Don, we're not going to ask you to come back. Uh, you should stay there. But instead, I was summoned to come back and to work because the Viadoom story was a very big story to the radio station, and they wanted us to drive the car, our top five show, which was still top five, all the way the Viadoom story let us go and then bring in the new show that they had hired and hope that that would be a ratings juggernaut. It has not worked out that way for them. I wish I could have been there when Stanley died, and I wasn't. And I'm kind of amazed that the Biodoom story was more important Kind of amazed. We'll come back and tell you uh, what happened in those six minutes on the Ron and Don Radio Network. Ron and Don. 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 Ron and Don Radio Network, man. Okay, how much do I have to pay you for this? <laughs> One dollar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome back to the uh, final segment. Episode number one, the Ron and Don Show. Everything Ron and Don at ronanddonradio.com, ronanddon.com. Thanks for stopping by and supporting us. We feel your support. For months now, we haven't said anything about our release, our firing from Cairo Radio. A lot of people reached out. Our local news channels, local papers, asking for comments. A lot of our colleagues inside the building, outside the building, uh, my son's teachers, every time I stop by Ken's Market, coffee shop, people want to know 
Uh, not only what happened at Kyle Radio, but what did you guys do? Because people knew that we were at the top of the ratings game. People knew that we created a lot of revenue for this radio station. And they also knew that we did a lot of cause radio, a lot of good things in the community. Why is that? Because we did it together. So it's been months now. And we signed an agreement with Kyle Radio. And that agreement says basically that thank you for 90 days of health care, 90 days of pay, our vacation pay. Uh, your sick pay is not paid. So by the way, if you still work there, take all your sick days because you're not going to get paid for those. Uh, no reason to stack those up. And then also that we would be thoughtful in the way that we talked about Cairo and they would be thoughtful in the way that they talked about us. And we are going to be thoughtful. We are going to be thoughtful. Three most powerful words in English language I always say are I love you. The three most important are write it down. So we've written these things down and we've shared these things with our attorneys and we feel good about what we've written and what we want to share. So let me just read this to you. Take about six minutes and then we'll conclude episode number one of today's broadcast. People who tuned in, they say, what happened at Cairo? It's important to know what didn't happen at Cairo. On January 10th, 2019 at 637, during a live radio broadcast at Cairo Radio, both Ron and myself, we were summoned to the programmer's office where the vice president of the radio station was waiting and there was a representative there from HR. Our programmer, who was nine months into his new job, he was standing behind his new stand-up desk. And because the desk is so tall and his computer monitor is so big, it was hard to see him. But I think he was back there. Anyway, we were told by the vice president at that time, who was sitting, but not facing us, facing away, that we were not supposed to report to work the next day. We are handed packets and told that our contract was up and that the company was separating from us. We were also told we were no longer welcome in the building. We are asked to pack our things into boxes and leave. In radio, we call it getting handed the box. Cairo had just handed us ours. So to be clear, Ron and I were not fired for cause. No. We were at the end of our contract period. Was our show fading? We put up a six share, 25, 54 persons in the fall. We were number one, 35, 64, and number two, six plus. That is not a fading show. That's called kicking ass. All the day parts at Cairo Radio were in the top five at that time. That's next to impossible to do on a news talker because you can't pad the numbers by playing music. I would challenge anyone to put up the numbers that we did over the past 13 years on a four-hour afternoon drive show with 9- to 13-minute spot loads and news sweeps where we disappear off the radio station at the top and bottom of the hour for another 9- to 13 minutes, and then you're interrupted with traffic every 10 minutes. We controlled 33 minutes of an hour of talk time. We killed it until the day that we were fired. We posted nothing on social media or in the media for months. I've been asked about the current ratings at Cairo. I'll let Cairo comment. I've been asked what it was like to work there. It was the best broadcasting job I ever had. And if someone were to ask to have a discussion about making Cairo a better place to work in an exit interview, instead of being sent a survey monkey, this is what I'd say. Number one, I applaud them for putting a woman's name first on a show. When we first arrived and we were owned by another company, women were to anchor the news and produce and serve all the male hosts. Women had to fight to have their pictures placed on the walls of the radio station alongside men. As their pictures go up, their pay should go up too. One of the top producers of the number one show on the radio station works as a nanny to supplement her income. I would bet the top 10 paid employees are all men, and I know that because I was one of them. Number two, in 13 years, I never worked for a female programmer. We work for nine men who rotate out of that seat every 12 to 18 months. One woman who applied that I know for the job was told she was too emotional. Another was told that she was too young. Another was too opinionated. A man has never told those things. I also never worked for a vice president that wasn't a man. Most of all, all the hosts there, for the most part, are men. It's time for women to be heard, to be hired, to be paid. It's time for men to allow women to enter the arena. 
Number three, the company owns the rights to the Seahawks and the Mariners. The NFL is 70% African-American, and yet every day part on their sports talker is white and male, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. For the most part, on Cairo, too. There needs to be more opportunities for black and brown communities and broadcasting across the board. Finally, in closing, I've shared with you that I have tried in my own life to be more involved in communities of young black and brown kids. We built the field at Cleveland High School together. We rode bikes 210 miles last year on the STP with the Major Taylor Project with black and brown kids. We helped the Seattle Police Department provide over 1,200 beds for kids in the Beds for Kids program that helps mostly black and brown kids. And in Pierce County, that's right, we're a part of the Sheriff's Department in Charlie's Dinosaur. That helps a lot of black and brown kids. A few months before a fire, I was asked to meet our program. He's our program manager or our program director concerning the stories that I was covering. He was concerned about my story selection as I directed what we would talk about every day. As I sat and drank coffee and he drank nothing, he provided a memo that showed the most popular ratings days and the stories that drove people to listen to the Ron and Don show. Stories like the Major Taylor Project, the Cleveland High School, stories like Solid Ground, Beds for Kids. All those stories about black and brown kids and communities were not at the top of the list. In fact, most didn't make the list. He told me that those stories that I was choosing about those communities did not resonate with our listeners and that I was making a big mistake. He reminded me of who our demographic was and was not. That memo still exists today. That's why I wasn't surprised when I was discouraged. In another memo, back during the holidays of 2018, to back away from Toys for Tots and our coat drive for kids at MLK Elementary during the holidays. Again, all stories and all that cause radio about communities, about black and brown children and where they live. Since then, we have both buried two parents. We mourned lost relationships. We battled depression and rejection. And we studied for our real estate licenses. And we prepared a statement to retire. We could move and work in a place like Chicago, Boston, to Sacramento. Or we could take another job here in Seattle, away from a colleague at another radio station. And we just won't do that. So we thought to retire. But you won't let us. And everywhere that we've gone, You've invited us to come back into your cars, your homes, and on your jogs. And for some of you on those trail runs, some of you have started to count your days along with me. And to Levi and Jim, I'm proud of you, my brother. Stay on that road of recovery and discovery. That's right. Thanks to all of you for your love and support. It has been an honor. And as long as you'll have us, we'll be here on the other side of these microphones once a week shining the light in dark places not worried about story selection ever reaching the right demographic and doing some cause radio along the way no longer in the shadow of the radio tower and to our colleagues that we leave behind you're amazing you're the best of the best and it was an honor and a privilege to learn from all of you over the years thank you and to the vice president of Bonneville Seattle 10 years ago this summer We climbed a mountain together, and we left our colleague, Brad Perkins, at the top. And you showed a lot of courage and tenacity and grit. And 10 years later, you fired me. And I thank you for that. Didn't happen to me. Happened for me. Ron and I, not victims. We think still that you're a good, good man. In our summit picture together, it remains on my living room wall. To the rest of you in the Ron and Don Nation, thanks for loving us, supporting us, and believing in us. Keep your head up and your shoulders back. And on our next edition, podcast number two, we're going to tell you about the passing of Ron's birth mom. And we're going to talk about death with dignity. And for the first time, we will reveal why we sued the Atlantic and Seattle City Council member Sally Bagshaw. And you're not going to believe what she told attorney Ann Bremner in her deposition concerning the Ron and Don Show. Episode number two and three and four and five. It drops every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Everything Ron and Don is at ronanddon.com.